Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get straight into it. Thank you very much. I think it's Patrick Sanquist. Sorry if I've got that wrong. It's sort of the uh, running right in signatures a bit hard. Look at this. This is probably the coolest thing in the package that we've ever had here on Mailbag. This is great. Look at this laser cut wood. Awesome. And yes, I can't use this to open it. We actually need a screwdriver. So let's go. Thank you very much. Wow. It's like environmentally. Oh, that's hard. Wow. They're self tappers um, with the small 10, uh, 10 point Torx or T10 or whatever it is. Um, here we go. Exciting stuff. What's going to be in here? It is a Kickstarter. Um, oh yeah, hi to all my uh, uh, Finnish viewers. This one's from Finland. Deliver to this guy or that crazy Aussie bloke. I love how the Australia and the kangaroo is uh, laser etched into this thing, but yeah. So <laughs> fantastic. Of course, you wouldn't want to send all packages like this. Quite environmentally unfriendly to send a wooden package, but uh, I can reuse this, of course. So let's Geez, how do I... I might need to get the knife in there to... Yep, to lift that up. Have I gotten all my... There we go. There we go. We're in like Flynn. We've got a note. And we've got laser cut. Make direct laser. <laughs> Fail. Screen capture, you can meme that one. Um, <laughs> that's great. All sorts of laser cut, wow. Oh my goodness, like a t like an absolute metric. That's the Raspberry Pi thing, isn't it? St Raspberry Pi stickery, they've got 3M. That'll smell good when I take it out. Um, EV blog, Pi supercomputer cluster. I'll have a very nice badge for my <laughs> Raspberry Pi supercomputer cluster. I'm just, I just like, yeah. Anyway, whether or not it's a Raspberry Pi or an Orange Pi, but look, all these little laser cut thingamabobs. Um, they're little shape. Oh, little digit, like a seven segment digits, and all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna have to read this. Uh, it's, oh, we've got a Pi case, laser cut, and oh, coal phaser. Coal phaser since 1891. Made in Finland. I got Finnish chocolate. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> know what I'm having for lunch today. And a whole bunch of laser cut stuff. Thank you very much, Frank, Patrick, and Joachim from CNC Design. Hope the sign is holding up. Yes, it has. It's still on my front door, the EV Log sign. If you come to the EV Log Lab, you'll see their sign. Awesome. Some oh look, it's a uh, it's a it's a um, circuit, is it like a leather wristband. I don't know. I'm not into uh, wristbands. I'm not like a skater dude or whatever. Um, Shimoto, there you go. They do like uh, laser cut CNC and stuff like that. Um, I wow. I don't <laughs> leather armband representing the LC filter of the human body. Well, it's LCR, actually. I see a resistor in there as well. Hmm, that'll be a sweet nameplate for my supercomputer cluster if I ever get the damn thing finished. Urgh. Anyway, like, I actually was, you know, how I was going to put it in the GMAC, Mac, what is it, the Macintosh G5 case? Um, I, I was thinking about maybe redoing it to put it inside a uh, G5 uh, Macintosh um, screen, one of those screen based ones, one of those monitor based things. I was going to rip the guts out of that maybe and because it's like got the, you know, like the screen, you could have it like all just like sitting there as like a monitor kind of thing. Anyway, cool. Thank you very much for all the stuff and they've got like an open source uh, Creative Commons Raspberry Pi case and stuff like that. So anyway, thank you very much guys. I'll link it in down below. Look at the Look at the raspberry. Awesome. Anyway, that's got oh, genuine 3M. Might have to have a good sniff of that. Anyway, we're going... Don't sniff glue, kitties. Um, we... Anyway. Um, yeah, I'll link them in down below for all your CNC stuff. Check them out.
And in case you're wondering if this video looks different, it may because like I am actually a little bit back, side, bottom, backlit at the moment with uh, these. I've got two of these. These are a uh, Aperture um, Studio lights, little small ones that come on stands. Really great quality dual battery. I might have to do like a tear down video. They've got adjustable. Um, here we go. I can turn it on like that. I can adjust the uh, color temperature they've just got the different colored um, leds in there of course and uh, they came with spare leds and like they're they're really nice quality and of course you can adjust the output just some um, fill lights for here in the lab like I've got old big softbox ones giant things and they're a real pain in the butt they corded these are battery powered rechargeable um, and they're just really super quality so I'm just trying that to see if this backlight you might see it like it accentuates highlights not that Maybe I need it. Anyway, um, yeah, give it a go anyway. I don't know what it's going to look like. Haven't seen it on the edit. It could suck. If so, sorry. Thank you very much, Derek Broder from Oviedo in Florida. I don't know all my Floridians. Are you Floridians? I don't know. Sorry. Just make this crap up. Um, so anyway, I know all my viewers in Florida. Been to Florida. Didn't spend long there. I thought I was in... Uh, Mexico, because everything was in Spanish. <laughs> anyway, um, let's have a look. From uh, the TCS. Uh, so thank you. Oh, oh, yeah, we like this. Old school. Old school. Oh, wow. Hang on. Oh, it's got like late 60s, early 70s written over it. Oh, it's, come on. Out of here. Wow. Look at that. Wow, beautiful. Ah, oh, precision. Um, from Precision Apparatus Co. Inc. Uh, Glendale, in, uh, made in the USA. Um, serial number 1543. Awesome, two minute teardown. Oh, vacuum tube voltmeter, model 68. Wow. <laughs> Gold. Two minute teardown. Check it out from Precision Apparatus Co. Incorporated, the Precision Model 68 Vacuum Tube Voltmeter, or VTVM, as they were uh, known, not VTVO, VTVM, back in the day. And look at the fancy pantsy, look at this, center zero. Um, that center zero scale is great. It'll move the um, needle to the center here, and then you can see the positive and negative excursions. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that's, yeah. Fantastic. So there you go. They've even got a center zero scale like that just for that. <laughs> nice. In Glendale, LI, New York, USA. Hmm. Most interesting thing about this is not only does it have one of those weird ass American plugs, but it's actually mains powered. None of this battery powered rubbish. And the <laughs> probe connector, none of this four millimeter banana plug, plug rubbish either. Look at that. Um, yeah, I don't even know the name of that. Hmm, anyone? Bueller? Bueller? These puppies were designed for service in, look, single screw on the back, none of that Phillips rubbish, and then looks like just a hinge to swing the back off, because you've got to change those uh, tubes or tubes. Um, serial number 1543. Fantastic. Wonder if whatever happened to precision test equipment? Hmm, the standard of accuracy. Anyway, let's crack this thing open. By the way, I did actually power it up and it didn't work. So, yeah, wah, 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 wah. And we, oh, 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 no, you can, it's, you can put a battery in the thing. Look at that. Looks like a single D cell. Wow. There's our tubes. Whoa, geez, that looks a bit, oh, wow, <laughs> classic stuff. There's our transformer up the top there. And, Looks like we've got three tubes, 6AL5s for those uh, playing along at home, and a 12AU7 as well. Wow. And look at those, uh, look at those trimmers. Wow. Unbelievable. And in any old school instrument like this, you've got to have capacitors in MFD, none of this uh, mu letter rubbish. But yeah, all just uh, point to point wiring stuff and 
uh, the switch, you know, it'd probably like still worked if, if you fix the tubes and the capacitors. There's you know, not much that can go wrong in this puppy, but yeah, the old uh, tag strip, fantastic. Got mains coming in, right? Just through the rubber grommet. Oh yeah, fancy pantsy. Sorry, plastic grommet. And then <laughs> the age old tradition of just tying the knot in the mains cord and then just uh, soldering onto the exposed <laughs> tag strip. That's hilarious. So, yep, they don't make them like that anymore, and for good reason. Um, <laughs> anyway, a VTVM, which was uh, better than, well, it depends who you ask, better than your uh, standard uh, meter back in the day, your analog meter, because it was an active component. Because it had the tubes in there, it had, would have had a high input impedance. I don't know what the input impedance of this sucker would have been, but it would have been high, just like your traditional uh, 10 meg ohm digital uh, meters today. So um, that's why they had tubes in them. Or back in the 70s and 80s, um, when they transitioned away from tubes, you could buy a FET VOM, um, <laughs> a field effect transistor VOM. So it re simply replaced the valves with the uh, with a FET in there, or a couple of FETs, and it would give you the high input impedance and it was active. But of course you had to have the battery in there, or in this case the mains or whatever, to make it work. Um, whereas your standard analog meter uh, just draws current from your circuit under test to drive the like 50 microamp full scale deflection. But of course your uh, VTVMs and your FET VOMs uh, back in the day, they could uh, do that without, um, you know, drawing, you know, much if anything from your circuit under test. You've no doubt seen this before. There's the modern equivalent, the FET analog meter. So that one, of course, you had to have a battery in there, hence why it's got battery check on there. And uh, it's got, look, dual FETs. Fantastic. Thank you very much for playing. And once again, this also had a center zero because you can do that when you've got a power in there to power the needle. You can put it put the needle anywhere you damn well want. So you just adjust it to the center like that, and then it can get the excursions either way. Whereas your standard analog meter is the, uh, you know, the taut band movement. It's got to be, yeah, you could offset it, like you could offset your zero position manually like that, but you generally couldn't move it all the way with LBJ right in the center like that. So you just didn't have the adjustment range. You only had a little adjustment range to adjust for when the meter was flat, on your bench or whether it was tilted like that because the needle would move a little bit and hence why the mirror on there to avoid any parallax error. This one doesn't have a mirror. <laughs> Hi to all my San Jose viewers, more USA. Um, thank you very much, Anthony Lima, who has sent in some interesting sounds and stuff. Let's go. Alright. Uh, how's that backlighting working? It's supposed to make me pop. Um, you know, it's supposed to like highlight if you backlight from behind, highlights your outline, and then you're supposed to pop from the background or whatever. I don't you know, I don't know. I haven't done any tests to set it up. No idea. So anyway, it did uh, uh, because of the extra light on the background. My camera, I you do use auto uh, exposure on this camera. Usually, I often on my bench stuff I use a fixed exposure, but for this I just set it to uh, auto, and um, it's gone an extra three dB. It's like it it had uh, like it's dropped an extra three dB, so it has to hasn't had to gain up an extra three dB. Sorry, note. Um, so yeah, I get. I get a 3db improvement. I know what I'm saying. You get a 3db improvement in the uh, what it thinks. Oh, jeez, things can get lost in here. Hang on. There's something. Oh, hello. And pack it. I think. I think that's it. I might check the newspaper again. But we've got uh, lots of interesting items. We've got a Brady label. Uh, we've torn down those before, but we can do a two-minute teardown. Ooh. Oh. No way. Oh, no, 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 we haven't. No, I haven't gotten one of those. Oh, sorry, I was just very excited. Um, <laughs> look. I thought they sent that. No, that old calculator. The Fryden 130 electronic calculator, 1964 job, and HP65 from 74. It was the uh, second all electronic calculator weighing 42 pounds, costing 2,195 bucks. First programmable calculator, uh, to, uh, no, the HP 65, of course. Anyway, um, that must come from the HP Museum, which I've been to. San Jose's Monument to Progress, the electric light tower. 
Cool. Ah, oh, images of America, Silicon Valley. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you very much. I'm going to enjoy reading that. I'm a history buff, let alone uh, tech Silicon Valley history. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a giant. Oh, I can smell it. A giant California shaped chocolate. <laughs> I can remember, I bought Mrs. E V blog because she likes um, her favourite animals, the platypus. So I got her a giant uh, custom, for Easter once, a giant custom platypus. Um, it was like, it was like this bit bigger than this, I think. And it was just, yeah, it was awesome. Um, took us ages to eat that. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, what do we got in here? Let's have a look. Uh, Looks like a uh, eBay thing, as you can tell by the uh, the China Post. You can do. Oh, here we go. There we go. You can spot eBay China Post stuff a mile away. And uh, more chocolate. Thank you very much. So we've got chocolate, chocolate, and uh, like Shrewers fine chocolate. Hmm. eBay chocolate. I'm assuming. Yep. From Zhejiang. Um, from AliExpress Warehouse. Chocolates from the AliExpress Warehouse. Thank you very much, Tony, for the stuff. Let's check it out. Oh, wow. Images of America, Silicon Valley by Sam Shui. <laughs> Something like that. Um, fantastic. I'll have to link it in down below. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. This is my bedtime reading tonight. Fantastic. Wow. Is this available on Amazon? If it is, I'll link it in. Check it out. Made in the USA. San Jose's monument to progress, the electric light tower. I've heard of this. Um, and, but I don't know where it is. We'll have to link it in. There you go. Is it still there? Is it still there? Can you still visit the, uh, visit the tower? I don't know. Mmm, chocolate. It's the California, San Jose, California bar. Oh, thank you very much. Shura's fine confections. Oh, I did. there's the details for those playing along at home, but not sure what I'm going to do tonight, but it's going to involve chocolate and a book. Mmm. <sighs> Two minute teardown. I suspect there's not going to be much in this puppy. Wow, I didn't expect so uh, old school. Look, we've got an ST micro there. What is that? Not exactly sure. That doesn't ring a bell. I we'll have to look for that. And we've got ourselves an Atmel ADC31. Oh, there you go, because this one had a uh, label on it, so I presume that was uh, programmed. But yeah, it's old school PLCC. Packages um, soldered down to the board. So what's the date code on that? 04, so 2004 vintage by the looks of it. And there's not much else. There's some power stuff. And it goes up to a motor in there that uh, just drives the uh, tape feed. And then um, the data going out to the print head. And that's basically it. It's not very exciting, is it? By the way, if you want this cool triple five timer t-shirt, and why wouldn't you, hand drawn by me, I'll link it in down below to the uh, Teespring store where I continually run the campaign for these, but once it hits 15 uh, shirts, orders for 15 shirts, then it gets printed and shipped out. So check it out. From Shanghai with love. Thank you very much, Max Chan. You should have uh, noted and should remember the name. He's been on the log several times, had several sucks of the salve, which this one could have been sitting there for ages, because if I see that you have several sucks of the salve before, then I pretty much is going to leave your stuff there. We can't have people um, consolidating the mailbag. Anyway, oh, Sushi Bits 3, no JTAG. Oh, anyway, it looks like we've got some sort of custom arduino -y board and some processors. Let's check it out. And I'll let you read Max's uh, extensive letter here for all the various uh, whatnots sent in. Thank you very much, Max.
And this is a Sushi Bits board. I'll link it in down below. Um, the Sushi Bits 3. It's obviously an Arduino uh, compatible interface. Max wants to know why the 4-wire JTAG interface stopped working. Sorry, I have no clue whatsoever. Um, it looks to be all hand... You know, it looks to be hand done. It looks to be hand soldered. So it doesn't look to be machine assembled. So, yeah, maybe. I don't know. But I had a look at the uh, solder joints under the scope, and they look adequate. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. And this 40-pin dip is apparently a super-duper cheap uh, Chinese one hung Lo uh, 8051 processor, 3.3 volt, um, from the STC 15F line, 61K of flash, and or a 2K of SRAM, and all the, you know, usual peripherals and stuff like that. So apparently, to program it, you just need a uh, Kiel Microvision uh, serial port plug-in. So you just connect up the uh, serial port to two of the pins on there and Bob's your uncle, apparently. wonder how much that costs, like, I don't know, 10 cents in volume or something, probably. Hmm. The reason why the 8051 is still popular is because there's no royalty to pay on it anymore, hence why China can just churn out 8051 variants until the cows come home. The items in the transparent bag are a 2DW233 dual 6.3 volt xenodiode from Shanghai 17th Railway uh, Radio Factory. Um, members on the metrology uh, section of the EV blog forum, presumably, they're so fond of. They claim it has lower noise figures than the LM399 or LTZ1000 reference chips. Well, there you go. Um, I have no experience with the 2DW233. So, I, and I'm not going to go measure noise now for a mailbag, but, uh, yeah, the important thing, not necessarily noise, depends on what you're after, uh, really. It's the main thing with a temperature reference like the 399 LTZ1000 is the Tempco, the drift of the thing, temperature coefficient. And they claim that there exists a current point where the temperature coefficient of the reverse bias Zener and the forward bias uh, Zena cancels out. Wonder if I can figure out some way of testing this claim. Well, yeah, obviously not on the mailbag. That would require a lot of work. That would require thermal chamber work uh, over different current ranges. Like I'd have to sweep. I don't know what the usable current range on this is in the data sheet. Um, if we can pull up the data sheet, we'll put it in here. But uh, I like. If, I don't, if you don't know what that point is, then you'd have to sweep it through the entire range at current range, so you'd have to get characteristic curves of at, at each temperature point. You'd have to at, at each current point, you'd have to get different temperature curves, and that is a metric buttload of work. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I might leave it up to there someone on the uh, on the EV blog forum, one of the uh, vault nuts, to uh, do that one. Yeah. Thank you very much, A. McBlain from Davidson in New South Wales. That's where I'm from. Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, not Austria. Thank you very much. Nice little... Ooh. What? Oh, jeez, that's tiny. That's a teardown of some little piddly thing with some little piddly one hung low brand lithium ion, uh, lithium polymer battery. And what is it? It's got some transducer on it. Hi Dave, here is an odd, oh, Fitbit Flex to the batter and the battery died on. There you go. So we can have a look at the Fitbit Flex. Wow. I'm going to have to get my macro lens out. That's ridiculously tiny. And that's what's inside a Fitbit. Um, it's, of course, uh, usually sealed shut, but this one, battery on this one's uh, died. Apparently, has it gone all puffy? Ah, oh, no, not really. But uh, yeah, that's inside the Fitbit, and as you can see, there's. I think we've torn down these uh, little fitness trackers before. It's pretty much a uh, naffle in them. Oh, geez, what? What's on the top of that? Is it? What's happened to that? What's happened to that chip there? Wow! What the? Is that like some of the plastic, or something? The plastic case? That they were maybe they were getting some thermal. Well, you wouldn't need to thermally couple it, wouldn't be taking any bugger or power. So, um, yeah, maybe it was just attached to the plastic and that's what's 
whoa, that's where yeah, it's just they're just stuck onto the chips. That's what you get when you try and take these things apart. Hi to all my French viewers, especially from Lyon. Love Lyon. I've been there. Um, and this is from Artline International. I'm not sure. Uh, like, yeah, it's the company name. So let's uh, let's crack it open. Smart solder paste and adhesives dispenser. Cool. All right, pick and place function for SMD. Yeah, and a foot switch for it because it's important if you're sitting there, you know, manually dispensing your solder paste, you want a foot switch to go, like to, you know, and it dispenses one little dots worse. So you dial up, usually like dial up how much uh, paste you want based on the pad size and everything. You can just go, and it can be actually be really quick um, going around doing that. So that's great. Okay, let's have a two minute tear down it. Oh, wow. Wow, that looks pretty good. The eye extruder. Oh, wow. Okay, it's all in bits. We'll have to figure it out, but this looks pretty groovy. Let's check it out. Solder paste dispenser. The eye extruder. Smart solder paste and adhesives dispenser of a PCB prototype and assembly. Do it yourself and craft a project's pick and place function for SMD component placement. Um, yeah, let's have a squiz. Oh, look at that. That looks jazzy, doesn't it? It's all, oh, it's all in English. Home screen, pick and place. Oh, it's all fancy pantsy. It's got little OLED screen on it. Anyway, it does look pretty jazzy. Look at all that. They've got some uh, contacts up in there that go from the buttons. So that's actually quite well designed. I like that. Wow, and you screw your, that's got a threaded coupling on there, but that plugs in there like that, and presumably uh, that screws on the, well, you've got to put your uh, your syringe or whatnot in there, so that's, that, that's really quite well designed. I kind of like that. Um, anyway, it feels feels pretty good feels pretty solid when you screw that on obviously this has to be replaceable because of course you know you whack your syringe in there there we go when we yep there we go we can whack it oh and yeah, well yeah we've got to take the uh thing off i won't do that now but you take that off stick that in there and presumably that shaft will just uh push out a set amount do we have a a like a, a flat plate on there to like to screw onto that to, uh, I presume that's what it would need, some sort of flat, big flatter plate that goes in there like that. And then, of course, you'd have a stepper motor in here that just drives that worm screw drive. I can never remember the name for those stupid things. And, and just, you know, shoots it out by a set amount, pushes it out by a set amount each time, and then pushes a syringe. Wow. And, of course, you put your regular uh, needle on the end, and it should dispense a fixed amount on the individual board. That, that's neat. I like it. Oh, one of those bloody silly Yankee things. Probably one of those fake five volt power adapters. Crap. Um, and, oh geez, that's a, that uh, tiny. And they're getting it right, so the five volt USB, go, why can't you? Just, ah, uh, no, 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 fail. You should have had USB on the end and plug USB directly into it. Why have the adapter with the little phono plug? No. Don't like that. Oh wow, check it out, I've got a whole kit and caboodle. And there you go, there's the plunger that I was looking for. I knew it needed a plunger, so you screw that under there, and that is what goes down into the syringe and pushes that down. Fantastic, I like this. Eye extruder. Oh geez, that's, that's a bit tiny. I think the screen's a little bit too small. It might look decent on camera, but uh, yeah, it is teeny tight. So we can go over there. Menu, oh gee. Yeah, you have to really read the manual to know what all the settings are. I'll tell you what, they've thought of everything. Look at this, you can set the pullback amount, because when you set the, when the plunger goes in like that, you probably need to pull back just a little eh, tad 
just, you know, hold your tongue at the right angle, pull it back just a little bit so it doesn't keep oozing out. You might be familiar with that when you've done it with a, uh, you know, a, a corking gun or something like that. It just keeps coming out and you have to sort of like pull it back a little bit to stop the uh, flow going out. Dosing mode, uh, extrusion. Oh, there's the pinouts, by the way, for those playing along at home. Um, oh, 3.3 volts out. That, oh, that, that's for the uh, trigger, of course, the foot uh, trigger if you don't want to... Uh, do it with your finger, you can do it with your foot. Fantastic. Um, and you can set the extrusion uh, amount, of course, and you can set the extrusion speed. So it, that's terrific. Wow, a lot of functionality inside this puppy. They've thought of everything. So yeah, if you want to operate it, you just plug the uh, foot switch in there. Yep, it's coming out, I can feel it. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's screwing out a tiny bit at a time. You can see it getting longer and longer there. So you just press it once and you can, uh, trust me, it's, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is actually pulling, it does a little pull back there. So it's default, so straight out of the box, it goes out and then pulls back. And, I, and you can physically feel it. And I, yeah, you can see it too. You can see, it, so you just dispense, 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 and you dispense a set amount of, you know, it'll require a bit of uh, trial and error. Um, to, you know, a little bit of setup to get the right amount of uh, paste, but when you want to dispense the paste onto each pad, bam, 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 and uh, it's going to be super quick. And they include some uh, lead-free solder paste as well, 10th of April, six-month uh, shelf life on that puppy. So just assuming that you've got your nozzle uh, installed there, you just go around going dab, 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 and you push the little, uh, push the little button there, or... As I said, you can use the uh, foot uh, switch, so you just go ch 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 it probably might be that quick, you know, like a, a couple of seconds per pad if you get it down really right. Um, you know, this is great for uh, prototyping small, uh, you know, and uh, assembly of small boards, and if you don't want to, you know, if you haven't got a solder paste uh, stencil or uh, for your board, then something like this, pretty jazzy. Hmm, if you're doing a lot of uh, SMD work, you probably should have a controlled solder paste dispenser. So this was actually a Kickstarter uh, late last year, and it was 150 uh, odd percent uh, funded. They did a uh, really good job. They showed like a 3D printed uh, case in the uh, campaign, but of course the final uh, product is a really nice case. It goes together well, very professional uh, quality. I, you know, pretty impressed by that. 5 volts, 1 amp it needs. There you go. Made in France. Hi to all my French viewers. Jeez, you don't see much stuff made in France anymore. Thumbs up. And check it out. You can set the uh, dosing mode to pick and place. So it's, ma it's dotted, manual, or pick and place. So what it can do is it actually comes with a couple of the little uh, uh, attachments, uh, usual pick and place attachments, that it will pull back and then, of course, given that it's got the, uh, uh, there you go, inside the uh, tube, like inside the syringe like that, it's got the O-rings, it can generate a vacuum in there and suck up your part. Let's try it. All right, let's give it a bowl. I've got an SO14 package there, so let's uh, stick that on. I've got a reasonably large head there, and whoop, there we go. You could bend the needle, of course, to uh, get better. Ah. Uh, I can feel it really moving. There we go. You can actually pick it up. It tells you to grease the O-rings in there. I did not grease them up. So, yeah, you know. But there you go. It does actually work as a pick and place machine. So I'll include a photo of some uh, typical, uh, like, line and uh, dot uh, dispensers with this thing. And it goes for about 190 euros, I believe it is, which is pretty pricey. But it's good quality and... Um, I don't know if there's another one on the market that is not a vacuum-based uh, system. This is like a motorized uh, one, and it's a you know it's a decent form factor, and you can stick it in a uh, stand as well, of course, and then you can move your board under. That's probably a better way to do it than doing it by hand, holding it going. Dit, dit, dit. Uh, some people prefer that; others prefer to leave this in the stand and then move the board under it like that. Um, it, yeah whatever floats your boat. So I'm going to have to try that out in anger. It'll take a bit of uh, effort, maybe a separate uh, review video or something like that. I do have another 
don't I have another solder paste thingy video to do? I have to find that one somewhere, I'm trying to do a lab cleanup. Um, I'll try maybe uh, combine the two or something like that. But yeah, it's expensive, but uh, I think it's going to do the business if you're after a, uh, a non-vacuum based solder paste dispenser. Anyway, I'll link it in down below. Check it out. They've done a really good job with that. I like it. Hi to all my Swedish viewers, in particular Roman Valsgimira from Stockholm in Sweden. Ah, oh, had a pull tab, whatever. Okay, let's have a look. It's tiny, whatever it is. We've got a oh little plug-in module. Um, little tip: if you're going to make, if you're going to send a module with little exposed breadboard pins like that then yeah um make sure you put it in like some foam padding or something otherwise the pins have got a little bit bent in transit but they can get really really bent in transit so just be careful of that wonder what this does let's have a look hi dave i received my sample ubm 20 board barely two days after my video on it and whilst i do agree how wrong the marketing was with the chip i'm curious to see what an experience e like myself can achieve with it well there's only so much i can do on a mailbag as usual um for those who don't know i'll link in the video uh down below of uh, my video taking the university of bristol to task on their um ubm 20 chip which is uh, uh design they claim something about you know zero power standby television something like that and it was really exaggerated marketing. So I took their marketing to uh, task and they admitted, yeah, you know, look, it wasn't the best and they reshot their video and stuff like that. So yeah, interesting that I've now got one of these puppies and uh, we might be able to do a video playing around with this Um, because it is like a ridiculously ultra low power. I forget the uh, specs, but yeah, great. We've got a little eval board that we can have a muck around with. But with this sort of stuff, measuring ultra low currents, it takes a while just to set things up and do it properly and you know you know you fart halfway across the room and you're going to be 10 least significant digits out another suck of the sav from siligo technology that's how i pronounce it there siligo siligo you know <laughs> whatever all right thank you very much fedex you can tell it's a custom thing press firmly to ensure a secure seal oh yeah i thought i had a rip tab on it let's have a look Obviously, it's a dev kit. Yep. Green packing configurable mixed IC. We've seen these. Have we seen this one before? Green. Oh, we've seen the green FET and stuff before. This is configurable mixed signal IC. We're set, like sort of a quick squiz. Now, silly go, as I like to call them here on the EEV blog, it's probably Silego or Silego or something like that. But yeah, silly go sounds better. Um, <laughs> setting in their green pack stuff well okay you know this is like the third or fourth suck of the sav and it's a oh, yawn reset ic but you know reset ic's are important so they've actually sent in a demo board for their reset ic and if you're developing a product that needs reset capability when uh you get voltage brownouts and stuff like that you want to reset your processor gracefully and you know do do proper system design not just you know ah whack five volts or 3.3 volts onto your micro and ah she'll be right mate use the internal um reset and stuff like that you know if you want to if you've got a complex system and you need to reset a lot of complex stuff a choosing and implementing a reset ic is really important so yeah um it doesn't do anything you just drop the voltage and it resets and the LEDs turn off and on. <laughs> They're not terribly exciting, but they are a critical part of electronic system design. And there's tons of reset ICs on the market. And, you know, you might think, what the hell's going on? But this one looks a bit more uh, complicated. It's got one uh, one output, push-pull uh, one times, two outputs, push-pull. It's got switch inputs. So let's have a look at the block diagram. Oh, crikey, look at that. Um, that's just nuts. The configurability inside this thing. Wow. So yes, this thing is, uh, looks like it is, uh, programmable. So presumably you can have a little programmer, you can hook it up or get it factory programmed, I would presume, to do 
you know, pretty much any sort of delay. It looks like we've got a huge table in there. I know I can't even see details on this uh, printout. It's probably, the printout's probably not good enough, but wow, what a lot of complex capability. Unbelievable for a little reset chippy. Thank you very much, unknown person from the old Dart. Uh, hi to all my viewers in the old Dart, which is England, for those who don't know. It's the, uh, it's what we call it. So what do we got here? All right, hey. Oh, the two millimeter probes. Fantastic two millimeter probes. My first, where is it? Yes. This is the very first multimeter that I ever own. Saved up my pocket money and got this Tandy slash uh, Micronta. Um, 22201 U for those playing along at home. And that used, yes, it still works. And that used the uh, two millimeter um, jacks. None of this four millimeter banana plug rubbish. Um, fantastic. And I used that for years. That was my main multimeter. I can't remember how old I was. Saved up my pocket money from collecting aluminium cans. And, um, because you could get a fortune for aluminium cans back in the day. There's one. Catch a can, cash a can, it's lots of fun to do. <laughs> hey kids, empty aluminium cans are worth real money at Alcoa Cash a Can Centres. So, every aluminium can you collect means extra pocket money for you. Catch a can, cash a can, make lots of money too. <laughs> so, let's have a look. What? Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful edge on, um... Oh, no. Hang on. I was going to say, what the... I was going to say, that was like, I thought that was some sort of light sensor on the back. Don't even know what brand that one is. Anyway, that looks pretty jersey. Wow. And... Oh, tranny tester. Haven't seen a tranny tester for a while. Who makes this? Transistor Checker TC1. It doesn't even have a brand. Wow, classic stuff. Look at that. Who uses a transistor tester still? But these were, you know, transistor testers were a very popular project in the uh, 70s and 80s in the electronics magazines. And uh, yeah, to, because transistors were expensive, right? Back in the 70s and stuff. So you suck them out of, you know, you reuse transistors out of, uh, uh, you salvage them out of uh, products and stuff like that, and you check them with your transistor tester, check the gain, check the HFE. Hmm, fantastic. I had an analog meter, um, a Tricky Dick one, Tricky Dick Smith one, 100k ohms per volt, beautiful. This one was only 20k ohms per volt, 100k, it was all about the k ohms per volt, uh, more the better, 100k ohms per volt. And uh, so if you feed in a volt, then it has a 100k input impedance or a 20k input impedance. Feed in 10 volts, it has 10 times more than that input impedance, not the fixed 10 mega ohms that you're familiar with the current uh, multimeters. Anyway, wow, two minute teardown, let's go. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, look at that. It's a TTC, who's TTC? Model C1001, made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. Anyway, uh, 20k ohms per volt. You can always tell. You don't even have to have that on the screen to know what the sensitivity is. You basically just look at the lowest current range, and the lowest current range is basically directly on the meter movement. There's no other shunt resistors or anything like that. So 50 uh, microamps corresponds to 20k ohms per volt uh, DC movement. And likewise, if you had, say, a 50k ohms per volt, which was fairly common for a high sensitivity one, or even the extreme ones like I had uh, that were 100k ohms per volt, you'd have a correspondingly smaller uh, current, uh, full-scale current range. Anyway, someone's taped that up, and what the bloody ball on the back's doing? I'm like, what? It's designed to prop the thing up on a, just, yeah, they wanted to tilt. It's the, <laughs> someone's do-it-yourself tilt stand. Anyway, it's all taped up. There's a screw on the bottom, but maybe it's uh, not, doesn't take anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I still have to do it. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a standoff. Ta-da! And we're in like Flynn, and of course, that's all that's inside. And analog multimeter, you have a single uh, AA battery for the ohms range. 
but of course you don't need the battery uh, to measure the voltage or the current because it's the meter movement uh, draws power from the circuit to deflect your meter movement. And there's a bunch of precision resistors, little range switch, that's decent, still good, beauty. Although this one was pretty novel, that it had a 2.5 kilovolt range, 2,500 volts, and you can see they've got a 40 meg dropper resistor there. Now that's not 40 uh, millifarads or 40 microfarads, that's actually a resistor and it's 40 meg. Wow, check it out, transistor tester TC1. Not actually sure who manufactures that, but it's got a diode uh, mode as well. Oh, high power. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. And, but not only can it measure the uh, beta or gain of the transistor, it can measure the alpha as well. And the alpha is the uh, factor, but the multiplication factor by which you've got to multiply the emitter current to give you the collector current. So it's the formula is um, alpha equals uh, beta on beta, uh, absolute beta plus one. And there's other ways to get it. And it can measure the collector current as well. Fantastic. It, that's a center off switch there. So I'm not sure what happens in the center, but yeah, NPN, PNP, so you don't have to swap it around. Fantastic. And it's got an internal shield connection as well. Oh, fancy pantsy. There you go. There's the scales for you scale aficionados. Beautiful. 50 microamp full scale ICO. And only goes up to 300 beta, so, you know, if it's more than 300, eh, she'll be right. It's more than 300. No worries. What do you need to measure it for? And because the way the formula works, the alpha, of course, is going to be a non-linear scale like that. Um, so this is you know, just like a uh, the ohms range on a multimeter, on an analog multimeter, will be non-linear. So, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> They've got the ohms range there. Um, and uh, whereas the other ones, the uh, beta is uh, linear, and so is the collector current as well. But, yeah, that's <laughs> they just don't make them. Like that. Well, they don't make, nobody makes transistor testers anymore, do they? I don't think so. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Oh, 9 volt battery. Oh, look at it. It's, is this like a kit? <laughs> this has got to be a kit, right? Is it like an old, like, magazine project or kit project? And, ah, uh, it's really how you're doing. The old uh, 9 volt, <laughs> just the clip uh, with the battery snap on there, and that's all just. Yeah, hand done. Oh, they put the heat shrink around, uh, put uh, uh, insulation tubing around there, but that can actually slide off. Look at that. <laughs> Cut it too short. The tubing, yeah, it works there, but you slide it off there and oops, that can just sh short out there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, wow, that's hilarious. They, someone's made that themselves. That's great.